We will consider a proposal from Saskatchewan Conference entitled Equal Access to Services of the Church Through Public Worship. We do have, uh, um, I see someone moving to the microphone, so I'm going to uh, invite that person to speak to this. Again, it's a, it's a relatively short and we will not read the proposal. Sarah Fanning, Hamilton Conference. Um, just asking in terms of the intent of this proposal, is it, am I misreading it that it is, the intent is to force congregations to perform said sacraments and other services, even if they feel otherwise? Lee Sinclair, Saskatchewan Conference. The intent of this motion was to say that no congregation can discriminate against someone on the basis of something they have no control of um, in most places. If you are asking if this will take away a congregation's right to make specific rules on who and how they marry people and do other sacraments, then yes. That is the intention of Saskatchewan Conference when we pass this, to change how congregations are allowed to make decisions when it comes to these issues. And I do think, um, speaking from a congregation that does, has permitted me to conduct same-sex marriages, and that's a move that I've been very proud of. However, I think it was one of the wiser moves of our church uh, to allow congregations on their own to make that decision. And I would stand by that policy that we, that we, uh, that we instituted, I believe, at the last General Council. I, I want to speak um, against it because I truly believe that every congregation should follow the laws of the land, that every one of these um, discriminatory uh, categories should be eliminated. But on the other hand, I believe that every congregation should maintain that wonderful right to come to it in their own time. Um, in this particular instance, in this particular conference, um, rather general council, we're talking about empire, and we're talking about the imposition of power on smaller groups. And I think that this is one example of where the larger organization should not impose something which I am sure all congregations will come to in their own time, but that they should be allowed to come to it as their consciences and their education and their understanding grows. I'm Peggy Jensen from Comox and I'm a presbytery. And I have such concerns about this because my congregation shares a building with a Catholic congregation. And it would be devastating to our relationship if we needed to enforce the fact that we were having same-sex marriages. We would not be able to continue our ecumenical relationship. In our presbytery, we have shared ministries with the Anglican Church, who's already struggling with churches that support it or don't support it. I appreciate the fact that we're a conciliary church and the congregations have a voice, and I think we need to hold that up. It's not that we want to look like we're discriminating, but in fact, we would be destroying relationships if we were in favor of this motion, of this proposal. Karen Douglas, Conference of Manitoba, Northwestern Ontario. I would f speak in favor of this um, because I think it, uh, it, because it is going to a remit, and I, and I don't know whether it would pass there or not, but it would send a message that part of the church is committed to this, and that swings the pendulum and maybe makes a few people think in ways that they wouldn't have thought of before. Heather Leffler, Hamilton Conference. I wish we were here. I will vote against this if it's made into a motion. Um, I'm in a two-point pastoral charge in southern Ontario. The only notion, modus, <laughs> Notice of motion I've ever received was following the last general council. It was that no minister of theirs would ever perform a same-sex marriage. Um, that was scary. We went to the board meeting. Um, people spoke their mind. I told them how sad I would be if I couldn't take part in my cousin's wedding because of something they legislated. My 16-year-old daughter looked around the room and said, Mom loves you. She'll stay. But what will happen when the next minister reads this? Will they come or won't they? And I don't know if that was the only thing. I think it had a little bit of the little church didn't want to be pushed around by the big church. But um, 
the people that made the motion from the big church withdrew it and made a motion that I could marry according to my conscience. It could not be in their book at this time, but when it was somebody in one of their congregations, they would then entertain the question again. I know it's not far enough for those folks that need it, but boy, it was a big step for them. Please don't rush them. In my pastoral charge, I'm, I'm a minister personnel in the Maritime Conference, and in my pastoral charge, we have a, a purpose statement that begins that we strive to be an open community of faith, an open community of faith. And yet the same pastoral charges session uh, will not allow me to perform the same gender marriages. And already four times, I found myself counseling uh, people uh, requesting just that. And so four times, I've had to be the person to utter the words of rejection to these people. And to me, that's a tragedy to see the look on their faces and to see the pain that this inflicts upon them. And I'm not ready to do it again. <laughs>